Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. L.A. Noir sets the new standard in gaming experience, both in storytelling and gameplay. All the details and features coming right at you from the start will probably make you smile the same way they made me. So let's see what makes this game such a hit. He has the biggest schlong in Hollywood and the smallest gun. Or maybe that's the other way around. I can never quite remember. First things first, the facial expressions and motion capture in the game are terrific. You can immediately notice if someone is lying or keeping information back from you. Not only this, but also every important character in the game has a memorable face and with the voice acting, this is innovative. And since the core gameplay is to make sure you get the right people, it is really important to pay attention to details on the faces. Simple process of elimination. Nines, I think. Why are you lying to me, Mr. Muller? Why would I lie to you at a time like this? The body motion in L.A. Noir is excellent. You see nice door openings, climbing stairs has also been wonderfully done. During inspections, it is really smooth, you don't get any weird movements, it feels really realistic and that's quite important. On top of this, when you chase people, the game helps you in navigating, so you don't have to restart because you got stuck, right? Another thing is that whenever you're indoors, you just do not want to run, because the movement is so lifelike that it feels right to simply walk. The game constantly tries to give you a movie experience. The HUD disappears in a lot of instances. When you arrive at a place, you see the top and bottom bars like in the movies. It sets the mood even before you get the controls. When you inspect something, the game zooms in on the object or scene and you really feel like you're looking right at it and that you are the one investigating the scene. Another thing is that when you arrive at the scene, you don't need to park, the game takes over, all adding up to this big movie experience. About every third main quest involves some kind of shooting, so as to break the detective work. You can also accept side quests and have a bit more action. The game offers 40 of them and they vary from simply gunning down criminals to actually helping people in various ways. You have unique recorded voice in most of them and also sometimes characters from previous cases appear. So it's actually worth doing them, they keep the game fresh and exciting. They allow you to confront your past. You said the house would be empty. Are you taking the medication I have prescribed? You said the house would be empty! Throughout your gameplay you'll have five partners, each of them having different relationship with you and through tons of discussions you will experience the real partnership so you're really working together. Sometimes when you're making a call or just walking around you can see them actually looking at the scene but there will be occasions when they are just following you but that didn't bother me. The game is so addictive that you just forget about these little flaws. Nevertheless, each of them has a unique character and they definitely take part in your gameplay. For example, while driving from A to B, you will engage in conversations several times, they will tell their opinion on crime scenes as well. So they don't feel like NPCs just wandering around, but they are actually doing stuff. Mueller, I'm charging you with the murder of your wife. You'll be arraigned and taken before a grand jury. Book him, Rusty. With pleasure. As a detective, you will obviously get to hundreds of places, from Hollywood studios to train stations and so on. So it is really versatile and the developers really try to keep it exciting. So don't expect to always investigate in an apartment for example. Detecting clues works really simply but still poses a bit of a challenge. So finding all the clues became, for me at least, a must early in the game. The variety of objects you get to examine is just simply staggering. You get to interact with hundreds of different kinds of them so again, it doesn't feel repetitive. And for the vast amount of objects, you get the smooth opening and closing motions. Again, just adding up to the lifelike experience. Cohen is meeting with Sheldon tonight. Also, the game allows you to skip parts of an investigation if you get spotted too many times or get killed. You also get shortcuts. If you don't want to drive to your destination, obviously you get a fast travel option. If you had to climb for a long time, the game will save you the back chip, so it really is about making it as fun as possible for gamers and allowing them to experience the core feeling of the game. The music of L.A. Noir fits in very well with the style of the game. I probably heard hundreds of times the investigation music, but haven't got bored with it yet. 
and so are the other ones. They set the mood very nicely, even before anything would happen. As you progress, you will work at different desks and so on different types of crimes. This again just explains how the game never gives you too much of a specific kind of gameplay. And this is best shown by the last cases, when there is a completely different sort of structure, but I don't want to spoil anything for you. In the beginning, obviously you will deal with petty crimes, and I was really hoping that later on there would be cases that are connected somehow, and so I was really delighted when these started appearing. Also, the game does have a main storyline, so it's not 21 separate cases that you have to solve, but also a big one that connects some of them. You get to know more and more about it in the form of newspapers, and some flashbacks also give background information, eventually leading to you directly involved in the investigation process. Hundreds of these promotions running at any one time. You're the lucky guy. From around the middle of the game, you get to choose between places to start and also people to interrogate. So the game gives you more and more control over the cases. The amount of recorded voice is huge. You get to tell people whether you think they lie, tell the truth, or you can also doubt what they say. And for each of these options, you get different dialogues. Obviously, the longest is the good one. But still, you take that and the number of characters, and you get over 50 hours of recorded dialogue. The quality of the actor's voice recording is also more than satisfying. So it's not just the quantity, but quality as well. You're lying, Fleetwood. We know that you supplied them. I don't know nothing about no drugs. All I do is my ten hair flipping burgers. Can you prove any different? Flipping burgers and strapping jolts of morphine to the bottom of popcorn cups, Fleetwood. Interestingly, everybody has something to say when you interact with them, and I mean everybody, and the conversations reflect their roles in the game. So a fellow colleague will comment on your work, for example, pedestrians will say something they read about you, and so on. The last couple of hours of the game are very exciting, the pace of the game quickens up and you get a full action movie experience. So the ending fits very well, but it definitely leaves a bit of a place for the DLCs, but that's not a problem. So, all in all, I really enjoyed playing L.A. Noire. The game offers around 25 hours of quality gameplay, so if you are thinking about buying it, do not hesitate, this is a great game. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. They're all dead, Finkelstein. Leave the weapon and put your hands up now. Put my hands up? Sure. Then what? Cop to peddling the dope? Cut a deal? Ship me off to the queue? As soon as I get locked up, some old friend puts a, an ice pick above my ear? No thanks. Only one other way out, shitheel.